Chapter One of Dyke Darrell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Dyke Darrell, the Railroad Detective, or The Crime of the Midnight Express, by Frank Pinkerton. Chapter One: A Startling Crime. The most audacious crime of my remembrance. Dyke Darrell flung down the morning paper damp from the press, and began pacing the floor. "'What is it, Dyke?' questioned the detective's sister Nell, who at that moment thrust her head into the room. Nell was a pretty girl of twenty, with midnight hair and eyes, almost in direct contrast with her brother, the famous detective, whose deeds of cunning and daring were the theme of press and people the wide west over. "'An express robbery,' returned Dyke, pausing in front of Nell and holding up the paper. "'I am sorry,' uttered the girl with a pout. I shan't have you with me for the week that I promised myself. I am always afraid something will happen every time you go out on the trail of a criminal, Dyke. And something usually does happen, returned the detective grimly. My last detective work did not pan out as I expected, but I do not consider that entirely off yet. It may be the one who murdered Captain Osborne had a hand in this latest crime. An express robbery, you say? And murder. And murder? The young girl's cheek blanched. Yes, the express manager on the Central Road was murdered last night, and booty to the amount of thirty thousand dollars secured. Terrible! Yes, it is a bold piece of work, and will set the detectives on the trail. Did you know the murdered messenger, Dyke? It was Arnold Nicholson. No! The girl reeled and clutched the table at her side for support. The name uttered by her brother was that of a friend of the Darrells, a man of family, and one who had been in the employ of the express company for many years. No wonder Nell Darrell was shocked at learning the name of the victim. You see how it is, Nell. Yes, returned the girl, recovering her self-possession. I meant to ask you to forgo this manhunt, but I see that it would be of no use. Not the least, Nell, returned Dyke, with a compression of the lips. I would hunt these scoundrels down without one cent reward. Nicholson was my friend and a good one. He helped me once, when to do so was of great inconvenience to himself. It is my duty to see that his cowardly assassins are brought to justice. Even as Dyke Darrell uttered the last words, a man rose up the steps and opened the front door. "'I hope I don't intrude,' he said, as he put his face into the room. "'No, you are always welcome, Elliston,' cried Dyke, extending his hand. The newcomer accepted the proffered hand, then turned and smiled on Nell. He was a tall man, with smoothly cut beard and a tinge of grey in his curling black hair. Harper Elliston was past thirty, and on the best of terms with Dyke Darrell and his sister, who considered him a very good friend. "'You've read the news?' Elliston said, as his keen black eyes rested on the paper that lay on the table. "'Yes,' returned the detective. "'It's a most villainous affair. One of the worst. I was never so shocked,' said Nell. "'Do you imagine the robbers will be captured, Mr. Elliston?' "'Certainly, if your brother takes the trail, although I hope he will not.' "'Why do you hope so?' questioned Dyke. "'My dear boy, it's dangerous.' A low laugh cut short the further speech of Mr. Elliston. "'I suppose you know me too well, Harper, to imagine that danger ever deterred Dyke Darrell from doing his duty.' "'Of course, but this is a different case. "'Tis said that four men were engaged in the foul work, and that they belonged to a league of desperate ruffians, as hard to deal with, as ever the James and Younger Brothers. Better leave it to the Chicago and St. Louis force, Dyke. I should hate to see you made the victim of these scoundrels. Mr. Elliston laid his hand on the detective's arm in a friendly way, and seemed deeply anxious. Harper, are you aware that the murdered messenger was my friend? Was he? Certainly. I would be less than human did I refuse to take the trail of his vile assassins. You make me blush when you insinuate that danger should deter me from doing my duty." "'I am not aware that I said such a thing,' answered Elliston. "'I did not mean it if I did. It would please me to have you remain off this trail, however, Dyke. I will see to it that the best Chicago detectives are set to work. That ought to satisfy you. And I sit with my hands folded meantime?' A look of questioning surprise filled the eyes of Dyke Darrell, as he regarded Mr. Elliston. "'No, but you promised Nell to take her east this spring to New York.' "'He did, but I forego that pleasure,' cried the girl quickly. "'I realize that Dyke has a duty to perform in Illinois.' "'And so you, too, side with your brother,' cried 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?